Hi, 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 Harsha. Hi, hi, Janiki. Hi. So oh. I think the Facebook thing is a little bit of an issue, so we're just going live on Instagram, guys. So hi, everyone. Uh, so this is Dr. Harsha for whoever doesn't know him, and uh, Harsha will just introduce himself. and then i'll introduce myself for harsha's followers hi guys i'm dr harsha uh, i had uh, smart vision eye hospitals um, thank you janaki for having me over yes any time pleasure <laughs> yeah so uh, dr harsha is also a friend of mine and uh, so we thought uh, since i've been uh, doing a series of posts uh, so for harsha's followers who don't know me i am uh, dr janaki i'm a dermatologist and i'm uh, a cosmetic physician also i uh, practice in kims hospitals and birthplace in hyderabad so i have been posting a lot about uh, dark circles because that is one of the primary complaints that has been coming uh, to us during this covid time also because i think everybody is free they're looking at their screens and paying a lot of attention to how their under eye area looks per se so um, apart from a dermatologist it's also very very important that an ophthalmologist also speak about uh, the causes of dark circles and what right. exactly happens because i strongly believe that uh, dark circles come from within and right. as someone who's had myopia all their life i think uh, the importance of eye health i definitely understand of course so of course. lot of questions also we've got for you only harsha in this live i think for the first time nobody wants to ask me any questions no problem yeah. no we yeah. need to take so dark circles you know there are quite a lot of reasons for dark circles and eyes are not direct uh, cause for the dark circles you know so yeah. these reasons could be one is uh, uh, fatigue like tiredness you know lack, lack of sleep lack of sleep mainly uh, no yeah lot of screen time people are very uh, the eyes get very tired when we keep looking at the screen staring at screens for longer durations okay so the eyes you know so when we tend to rub the eyes that particular area the skin part the vasodilatation happens like a kind of an irritation so definitely yeah. they tend to uh, show like a dark circles the pigmentation kind of thing and yeah. people having a lot of uh, general skin allergies also can cause you know dark circles can be uh, prominent in such yeah we see that in a lot of atopic patients per se i think yeah i'm going to bother you about those drops later during the talk lot, i think yeah people you know when we try to stare at screens a lot you know the eyes get uh, dry and mm -hmm. uh, counteract the dry dryness the body tries the eyes try to uh, secrete a lot of uh tears so you know they get yeah the, the exfoliation happens at that particular area so they also oh. tend to uh, you know yeah. give a uh, dark circle effect and yeah the under eye bag sort of thing that comes yeah, yeah. and people who are on glaucoma drops glaucoma is like a for a lifetime treatment yeah. you know yeah. keep using drops uh, very often every day in fact Yeah, so yeah. These drops try to irritate the under eye skin just nearby the lower lids. So okay. all quite a you know, and even the sun exposure to yeah. sun can also yeah, cause. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a very big deal. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely, uh, dark circles. If you can avoid direct uh, sunlight, like uh, you know, sunscreens and uh, wearing yeah. goggles, for the yeah. sun can definitely. So Uh, any particular type of uh, thing we have to look for in sunglasses harsha when we are uh, buying sunglasses yeah yeah basically uv protection is very very important they, uh, any branded ones uh, by default they give you those uv protection glasses that uv protection okay yeah and as dermatologists we advise them to have that thick band on this side so that it protects this area of the skin also okay. so that's what we say from our side right sunscreen also can be applied Yes, yes, sunscreen for sure. We we talk about sunscreen for the face, especially the, since the skin bit under the eye is very thin. I think for sure for the eye, we definitely need the eyes. They should make sure the sunscreen does not uh, enter the eye. Go into the eyes. Yeah, yeah. The, that also we hear a lot about a lot of complaints about you know any can, specific ingredients that ophthalmologists say that should not be in sunscreen. Nothing in particular. Anything which can irritate okay. the eye can. Uh, cause a lot of okay. redness and so stuff. yeah especially for uh, what i do for patients who have uh, a lot of uh, skin issues and allergies i tend to go for a physical sunscreen 
not chemical okay. sunscreens the ones that have lesser irritants is what we do our little part to avoid irritating the eyes i think i think like tea bags also help a lot i believe yeah tea to- bags because of the caffeine it's simple like how you had said there's vasodilatation the caffeine acts as a vasoconstrictor and uh, so putting the tea bags or a little bit of coffee powder in their face masks and see serums are also Uh, not to yes, give a good so a lot of under eye creams now we're uh, advising for vitamin C and niacinamide and stuff like that to help with that little bit of skin lightening and exactly, exactly. we are actually uh, advising the retinol also in under eye creams at a very lesser percentage than what we use in the normal skin right. because um, otherwise it will probably irritate the skin because it is a bit thinner than the rest of the face Near yes, definitely. Lip. It's actually much more thinner. It's almost a one point eight mm difference or something between the right. skin and the skin. So uh, that being said, uh, also uh, should we take a few questions? There are some questions that are coming, Harsha. Of course. The so, best. Uh, there is... were questions on my page, which we'll take in the end, I think, because I'll have to close this and then see the questions. There is a there is one Rajini who wants to know that she is the mother of four year old. and okay. has a built uh, sleeping disorder because of this i feel dizzy all the time i can't sleep okay yeah so <laughs> sleeplessness is uh, something that dermatologists can't really advise on except that we'll say don't stress and stuff so right. uh yeah with a 4 year old i can imagine they're not sleeping at all but yeah uh, so is, is any the, tips from you guys to sleep is, is mother has the sleeping issue yeah mother is, has a sleeping issue i believe yeah Right, right. Uh, is she on screens for a longer duration? You know, sometimes when we have a lot of exposure to LED screens, right? Like let yeah, it be a phone, yeah. your laptop, yeah. any screen, uh, yeah. they emit a lot of blue light. Correct. Right. These blue lights are, are um, you know, known to cause insomnia, like sleeplessness kind of, because they try yes. to stimulate eye and brain okay. together. The optic okay. nerves, brain, so they tend to yeah. stimulate. Then. I I uh, see a lot of patients asking me about uh, you know the sleeplessness and all so this first yeah. question is how much is their screen time in a day yeah so how we much is the recommended to... screen time from ophthalmologists no we we don't uh, always uh, ask the, ask people not to uh, use the screens at a stretch say say 1 hour take a break yeah. for 15 minutes after okay. after 1 hour of okay and uh, you know this way you can also bring down the strain on the eyes and also okay. when the you know screens are always obviously at a uh, closer to the eyes right yeah so, true true yeah when they are closer to the eyes our lens tend to accommodate too much okay uh, they tend to accommodate and they go into a little bit of spasm they can also cause a little bit of myopia with okay. extended this again yeah. it's a very temporary though but still okay that okay. uh, the distance will become a little blurred after uh, extended screen times okay so you suggest taking a break between break. Uh, prolonged then screen time because now in this pandemic i think nobody can really avoid the screen yes yes so yes. that was one of another question that we had got that you know children are doing these online classes how can we help protect their eyes we we can also uh, have the um, kids uh, wear plain glasses with a blue light filtered lenses oh so that's actually useful is it harsha of course So, from yep. what age do you advise these blue light filtered glasses for children, and for how long if they're using the screen are they advised? The best thing is to avoid uh, extended use of screens. Best thing. Yeah. Best yeah. Thing. <laughs> which, yeah. Which again is practically not possible these days. So, True. Uh, kids who are actually now school, uh, who are attending schools or online schools now, I would yeah. ask them, ask the ask the parents to go for full time glasses, uh, the kids for full time oh. glasses. Okay. But as long as they're on the screen, better to have they them. They have to use the glasses. The glasses and uh, these glasses are freely available in all the ophthalmologies. Uh, any any optical store, just so a plain. Okay, they have them. Yeah, the okay. plain. They commonly call blue cut lenses. Okay, blue cut lenses. Yeah, okay. you can just so ask I'll for blue. Yeah, they're different. Okay, and... so, so yeah, same thing for the adults as well as the children. They get the same glasses. Oh, blue, what they call. So you, oh. you can over the counter you can just ask them for blue, blue cuts and then there are different ranges as well. So whatever is convenient yes. for depending on the screen time, they can oh. get it. Okay, perfect. So that 
being said about screen time also another very common question we are getting nowadays is that the eyes are also a possible uh, entry point for the covid-19 virus so how do we avoid that and uh, this virus is very less known to us how it spreads and stuff like that even today uh, i got a forward that it's an airborne disease earlier they yeah, said yeah that that yeah i got that in the morning and it was quite surprising yeah. actually yeah Uh, earlier they were saying it's aerosol transmitted now they're saying it's airborne then in between i thought that uh, the surfaces don't carry virus yeah, yeah so now that's the new thing i i think it, this is just like a mystery novel people are learning yeah. and unlearning about the virus every day so yeah. but uh, do you advise that uh, people now that they're stepping out have to wear any protective gear for their eyes as well no actually what i'm uh, um, you know advising is what i can actually guess from what we can see here when we touch any body uh, secretions can transmit yeah. this one yeah it be uh, eye tears or saliva anything okay okay so viral load is found in all these body secretions yeah okay so when we by mistake uh, touch the eye the eye yeah. is the main source of entry for the virus yeah then it could so what exactly happens is people get with get sore throat right sore throat yeah. throat nose and eyes they're all connected they're all connected yeah yeah so the virus can transmit through sore throat also so even oh. the eyes can get yeah infected. so it it's all so is that actually just stepping out to go to a supermarket or something it they they'd also rather wear glasses to avoid touching their face right no but you know if we touch the eye accidentally mm-hmm. yeah. also you know the uh, conjunctivitis so, kind of yeah. oh, better to you see that sort of picture is it harsha like a conjunctivitis sort of picture in fact the first case uh, uh, you know which was diagnosed was through oh really i didn't know that oh that's that's interesting a patient came to i hospital and then oh. was treated for conjunctivitis and two oh, days later, he was uh, he started getting other symptoms like oh, things wow. so fever oh and then so it was just oh that's very interesting actually i didn't i didn't know that and a lot and, of people like even i have the habit of you know we unknowingly just touch our eyes and we're touching our face constantly so you, and you, stuff like that happens obviously you you use contact lenses i believe right yeah i use contact lenses because i'm half blind <laughs> i have to use contact lenses you have to be very careful uh, jan yeah. because yeah i'm wearing it now for the live otherwise i'm wearing glasses outside <laughs> so just to be safe Good yeah way. so during this pandemic you're actually telling people not to use contact lenses per se i i believe that's what the us ophthalmologists are all that's suggesting yeah the second is cro- chances of cross contamination so yeah by in a hurry buddy we don't clean their hands or hygiene Correct. is not so obviously the main source of entry so always yeah. there is a chance better to avoid contact lenses and yes. also the context you know we don't use this lubricating drops frequently the eyes get dry a lot so oh. uh, so when you're using screens a lot on top of this these contact lenses and again there's yeah. a lot of time the eyes so tend to get really dry so it's all better to avoid contact lenses if given yeah. a chance but yeah. Yeah. if you're careful so then I it, yeah i it, guess so when you don't have a choice you can't go to a live with glasses on so you have to wear contact lenses but yeah. yeah so that was another thing that a lot of people were asking about if it's okay to wear contact lenses or not so yep. this brings us to lasik which is the very very popular question for you like everybody wants to know about lasik why they've had lasik and then their eyes are red and stuff so i'll just uh, tell you those questions because maybe they're waiting give me one second I'll... yeah actually you can probably tell our viewers a little bit about lasik harsha i'll open this in another screen and take the look at the questions that will be easy Understood. so uh, lasik depends lasik is a small corrective uh, the glasses correction procedure which we try to reshape the cornea cornea is the black eye we, yeah. we with try to reshape the cornea so that you can see without glasses so there's a protocol that has to be followed uh, depending on what, how much power you have what are glasses you have and we need to check your eye condition whether you're suitable or not yeah so, i wasn't suitable that's why i didn't get it right yeah, so yeah No, so, uh, do you see it with a lot of people? Like, yeah. I think there's so many different kinds of uh, LASIK that yeah. you know. This is one of the option. 
yeah. to get to do we have couple so of what, other options. yeah what are the other options i think it will be very useful for uh, everyone basically when we try to uh, uh, use laser and correct the power the cornea gets thinner yeah okay so we try to decrease the thickness of the cornea so if the thickness is already less and we try further decrease it it's in trouble so people were not suitable for lasik we do a technique called permanent contact lens okay wow so the contact lens like what everyone is using is like a temporary one it's you put it in the morning and remove in the evening yeah yeah this yeah. one it's an implantable lens they have their custom oh. made oh wow Yeah. So, um, so even if you put on weight or the shape of your, uh, you know, nothing. they keep saying nothing, nothing changes. Nothing. Oh, perfect. And how how long uh, do, do these permanent contact lenses last us? This is for life. Technically, for oh. life. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So, uh, what about uh, see some uh, some people keep che- uh, seeing a change in their power much later on in life also. So, what about patients like that? These kind of powers, what uh, after twenty years of age, usually, uh, it, uh, male and females, yeah. after years on an average, the the glasses don't change. The power of the glasses don't change. Okay. Yeah. This yeah. power is zero for life. After forty with age, we glasses. That okay. that's. so everyone has to undergo that so during reading glass like for uh, near vision or any any uh, any kind of near work we we'll just have to wear yeah. reading glasses and this oh. gla- lens what we are implanting now is going to be there for life in our eyes oh perfect and we don't change to 95 percent so what powers don't change okay so uh, what about these patients uh, they, uh, what if they want to go for near vision correction like later on in life once they are 50 60 uh, for, for time being uh, the, the uh, there's a lens company from switzerland who are uh, manufacturing oh. these lenses even presbyopia okay. presbyopia is the so after 40 they Then. can get it's all again trial again there's nothing as proved oh. yet uh, proper okay. okay so once the, uh, yeah. these lenses are in the market we can obviously help them to you know also get rid of reading glasses as of now what we're doing is around 40 40 plus we're doing a technique called rld rld is a refractive lens exchange okay. so the natural lens okay. we try to replace with a multifocal or trifocal lenses provided how desperate they are okay. to get rid of glasses but we do definitely have an option not that we don't oh. have an option to get rid of We yeah, the same thing. A lot of ask. people don't want to wear those uh, glasses. You know, once yeah. they're older, every time they have to wear their glasses to read. So, what is an ideal right. age that they go for this correction? Like once they're fifty or fifty-five or sixty. Depends on what the power they have. Supposing they have already uh, myopia, existing myopia, and okay. associated glasses has been added on. Uh, okay. Age is five on an average. So they they can oh. get get. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so we need to I, assess the particular. Yeah. Properly before taking. I am taking. not able to find these questions. I'll find the questions in the second part once we go on. So oh. yeah, that was another thing. And uh, so I also wanted to ask you about uh, moving away from the clinical part of dark circles to the yeah. fancy part. You know, people want. Uh, okay, somebody has a question saying, "Does LASIK suit for uh, astigmatism?" definitely i mean we need to check if corneal thickness is there and we need to see uh, how much astigmatism they have say if it's oh. around 0.5 to 3 we can do lasik but again there are better procedures lasik is been there from like say past 25 30 years we've been practicing yeah, yeah. There, so there's new ones now maybe yeah, yeah. so, so the alternatives are there we need to check okay. where do these people stand if everything yeah. else is In, and lasik also can be done or okay. we need to if any other such procedure suits better for them okay so, so how we, about online teachers who already wear power glasses i believe that's another question so if they already yeah. have uh, oh okay so teachers who have myopia and they're already wearing glasses what can they do is what they say in, in fact i mean uh, to protect their eyes or to get rid of glass in case if they just, just i think uh, to protect their eyes from the blue light the question came in earlier i just saw it they they can just go for a blue cut lenses as i mentioned earlier and also okay. because 
mostly staring at the screen for longer durations. They can also take breaks at like, and use a lubricating drop, the artificial yeah. tears. Artificial yeah. tears, you know, get the eye and then give them a little bit of comfort. Yeah. So, so, so uh, someone says I got LASIK done, but got back power. Actually, I hear this from a lot of people that they get LASIK done and then they're getting power back. So. Earlier, we we only had LASIK, uh, Janaki. We didn't have any other procedure. Oh. Okay. So we yeah. for any kind of powers, let it be minus oh. eleven, minus yeah. five, twelve. So now we have a, a protocol. Okay, Both so it's it's much more refined now, and then the I, results obviously are better because the machine probably like changed and it's different. Better alternative techniques for higher yeah. power, like may uh, say less than more than six powers. You know, okay. there are other techniques than LASIK. In earlier days, ninety oh. six when Max Vision, um, so yeah, they, they initially my boss yeah. he. Was what would use LASIK? So they were doing oh, yeah. all procedures for all, yeah. all powers. But now the protocol has changed. Oh, perfect! So the newer machines definitely are probably giving better results. So we need to choose who to go for LASIK and who not to. Yeah, no. I think that's that's very important. So, uh, so uh, Sonali here is asking that she got LASIK done last year, and if there is any care that they can take to prevent uh, getting power again. Um, yeah, she, can, she uh, in case she uses a lot of you know in generally also prevention. To, to how to if the power comes back or anything, we just have to time only decides. There's so you basically we, take care of your eyes like how you would normally. Normally, it's just regular work. Is uh, you know LASIK uh, causes a little bit of dry eyes. Okay, uh, so, so they it, continuously have to keep using drops and stuff. And especially if they if their profession is more in front of the screen, then lubricating drops help uh, you know comfort the eyes. So no rubbing yeah. the eyes of small issues can be uh, prevented. In case if yeah, so this rubbing of eyes is also a major cause for dark circles that we see. We see in a lot of atopic patients that they're continuously rubbing their eyes. They end up breaking all the capillaries here, and they come to us with that nice bluish gray pigmentation which won't go away. Anything we do. So they'll keep rubbing and then they'll keep coming back. So it's very important uh, to take care of the allergy and address the cause of the dark circles. So ice cubes, ice cubes also work better. Cold yes. compresses. Cold, yeah, cold. cold compresses the spoon technique and all that. We'll talk about that. I think in a little bit about how they can help their eyes. So uh, what can uh, what can people actually do uh, to like obviously if you're getting Like our children from probably developing myopia. This is more like a. Uh, I have uh, eyesight issues. My brother does. We got it from our father, so I don't want my daughter to get it. So, is there anything specifically we can do uh, to help these kids? Not they will get it anyway, but not these crazy eyesights. Hmm. I, I I wish I could have uh, helped you with that question, but yeah. so we can't not, prevent it, uh, Jan. Yeah. So, uh, do you think? Uh, so, what do you it's think about diet? diet. Like, so, Def definitely, uh, a diet good with all kind of vitamins, like regular whatever we eat. You know, like yeah, for, especially for vitamin A is one important. Uh, yeah. So, supplement. how much? Uh, how much vitamin A do you guys talk about? Like for skin, vitamin we are very particular that you know the diet has to be such and such a way if you want your skin to look such and such a way. Is there anything like that with the eyes? There is, but again, it depends on the age. If it's kids, there's certain particular parameter. If it's a woman, then we have uh, different parameters. If pregnant women, we have different parameters. So it depends. Okay. They're really deficient. Deficit is there. Vitamin A deficiency yeah. is there. We would like to assist them because grades of deficiency we have. We see in eyes. Like to yeah. start, the basic is dry eyes. Yeah. Happens with vitamin A, like xerosis happens. Yes. And then, so all our isotretinoin patients also come with that big complaint of xerosis because it dries out the eyes. Yeah, and hypervitaminosis is of major concern. A lot of vitamin A is also not good for the eyes. Uh, yeah, excessive pressures. So we need to be very careful while giving them uh, a dose of vitamin right. A because these yeah. days in clinical practice I don't see much people with kids with vitamin A deficiency because good diet is available now. Not yeah, like two days. Yeah, yeah. So vitamin is one supplement. 
the other one for the eyes is omega 3 fatty acids yeah so it's very yeah especially even omega 3 because especially vegetarians who don't have seafood and stuff you know yeah. they have omega 3 so that can be given as a supplement you get a we get a omega 3 supplements in the market yeah so the normal can, yeah. yeah and especially in age old people uh, aged people what we call armd age related macular degeneration that's oh. because of deficiency of lutein and zeaxanthin Th- these are amino oh. acids okay yeah. wow they end up uh, losing their vision if because of uh, deficiency of these uh, micro minerals oh, elements okay you know our grandparents they would have be doing a lot of uh, dieting yeah. and stuff uh, yeah the, yeah puja and stuff. yeah so they probably uh, would be so yeah radhika had asked a question here saying i'm scared i'll lose my vision so i think she has to take a diet rich in amino acids and that will help her so uh, there is another question heard yeah. that uh, uh, snigda says she can she can neither wear lenses nor get lasik done again as the cornea thick thickening is less i guess that's what she means so what would be the solution for a patient like that um if uh, this power is stable if there is no change in the power for the past 6 months they can probably yeah get an icl she can get an icl done icl yeah, is so. the plant part yeah so harsha is your person to go to <laughs> you can find out about that procedure i guess about there so uh, another one bhavna is asking uh, is myopia correction suitable for people whose power is less than 1.5 with both cylinders and spheres yeah yeah we, we, uh, there's no restriction for power power correction we've also corrected for minus 0.5s also because oh, uh, for job job purposes yeah. like uh, yeah. the army pilots and stuff maybe army okay. yeah so even 0.5 they're not have so for such conditions okay. we have done so for person to be they really don't want to go for power you can do it so there's no yeah. restriction as such okay yeah. so much a lot of people i see that you know they have this 1.5 one power they don't wear glasses and they just like i think they've adjusted their eyes to look at normally like uh, they don't wear glasses yep. they don't wear lenses and they just you know living like that is that okay yeah i mean as long as they're comfortable no headache and strain because you know oh. uh, myopia is also called short sight means the near is all fine and most of the work is yeah. near for them. so as if it so comes they don't to bother. they don't bother as yeah. long as they don't take and strain on the eyes and you know because like they can continue like that as they can manage oh. yes, yes. Okay. there's no we also have a misunderstanding that the powers increase if you don't wear glasses and stuff like that it's nothing yeah, to do with not that's a big misconception yeah yeah, yeah. so, so then, that i think okay, there is a lot of misconception for a lot of people there yeah the powers so, is, is of the kid at a growing age the powers keep changing till around say 19 20 years and then they stabilize okay. Okay. after that in respect of the use glasses they wear them or not the powers keep changing okay. till around years. after that the stability happens yeah So, does weight gain and losing weight or sh- uh, change in the facial contour does that actually make any difference for the vision? No. For, for, for yeah. the vision per se. Not. You, you uh, call water retention. There are some conditions where there's a lot of water retention in the body. So yeah, then- high uh, high salt diet. We see that with a lot of patients. They take yeah. a high salt diet and they end up having that under eye bag. When we go into higher altitudes, uh, less. less atmospheric oxygen and all so there's a lot of water retention eyes get cloudy so that's why we give uh, we recommend who are doing trekking and stuff at higher altitudes we uh, give them dimox dimox is a diuretic oh. so it takes oh. out a lot of body yeah okay. that oh. uh, change in the facial contour the there's nothing to do with vision that doesn't matter okay So uh, I also want you to vouch for me and say that putting hyaluronic acid under their eyes as fillers also doesn't affect their eyesight because that's the number one concern for any patient who comes in for a filler because right. uh, uh, that's one of the ways which we treat dark circles. We right. put in a little bit of that hyaluronic acid sugar substance, and that's the you know that's probably the correction for a lot of people who have genetically uh, absence of that fat pad. 
So their first question is they read on Google because the first complication that comes up is loss of eyesight. So they're like, what? What if we lose our eyes? No, so, nothing. Yeah. directly related to the eyesight again uh, yeah. you know um, the if your uh, injector is really bad and goes and injects into a blood vessel then you will lose your eyesight but yeah this has nothing to do with the vision part of it definitely yeah. if as long as uh, you know um, as you were mentioning the the injector doesn't go into the blood vessels or something like that but otherwise nothing to do yeah. with the yeah so it, it doesn't yeah that so um uh, allergies so i also wanted to ask you about these eye brightening eye drops that everybody talks about it's it's very big in uh, at least like our line of work we see people they want their eyes to be bright and shiny all the time so <laughs> what is that and is it safe usually what happens when we get tired the, the eyes when they get dry and they get tired the uh, the white part of the eye gets a little red like even if yeah. you have lack of Less sleep when yeah. we wake up in the yeah. morning. Yeah. Or, yeah, that's because vasodilatation. The blood vessels around that area dilate, yeah. and a lot of fluid, blood passes into those vessels, and it causes a lot of yeah. red. The best part is to have good sleep. No, okay. it will take care of itself. Yeah, the drops, whatever we're using over the market or the counter, they contain phenylephrine. Uh, yeah. Long stage of it. again is not good because they cause hypertension the temporarily they constrict the vessels and once you stop yeah. using stop the dilat the rebound phenomenon is too high the dilatation oh. happens twice thrice so it's the so, rebound yeah. one yeah so and so only so, in case of an emergency and they have a big event then it's okay but way, not like long term you right so because gets uh, too much red no we tend to overuse these drops and you get used to yeah. these drops Oh, misuse yeah, them. Yeah, a lot of people I've seen just do it to you know just look brighter and fresher yeah. or post eye makeup yeah. and stuff. Right, we misuse them and then it end up in complications. You can end up. Oh. Uh, the... yeah, yeah, sorry. I, yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I think there was some issue with my connection. It just went off. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I got a few of the questions, Harsha, which uh, we got on my question page. So uh, one was how. how to reverse under eye hollows caused due to wearing spectacles for years so i don't think wearing spectacles uh, actually causes under eye bags usually so, that yeah, yeah that's usually not the cause so according to dermatologist briefly i'll just tell you about what causes under eye hollows because i think that will take care of like three questions here so uh, usually uh, according to us under eye hollows is usually structurally uh, they usually have a deformity either their eyebrows are too uh, baggy which when you have a top light on top and your eyebrow is too baggy it causes a shadow underneath so that's one of the common causes otherwise you have hollow eyes your eyes itself are deep set so naturally that darkness my instagram it's telling me <laughs> so yeah sorry about that so um that being said um so that usually structural abnormalities like i said hollow eyes or you know if you have that fat pad is lost due to age or some people genetically don't have that fat pad so that is why you it, usually it, have under eye hollows sorry excessive dieting also excessive yeah, dieting so, dieting Yeah, just like you're you losing fat all over your body, you lose your under eye fat also, which is not at all a good thing. No, we tell our patients that if you're losing excessive amount of uh, uh, weight, you're going to lose the fat on your face, which is again why you'll want us to fill it and make you look younger. So you have to have a balanced diet. It's very important. And uh, yeah, being fat is actually a sign of youthfulness. That I think not any more in modern times, but yeah. <laughs> so that so that and if the under eye darkness is because of a skin issue usually we see in lot of atopic patients they have allergies and then they keep rubbing their eyes which right. you know like you had said causes the capillaries to break and then they have that bluish gray pigmentation so it's usually one of these causes glasses actually do not cause under eye bags i think definitely glasses don't cause like as you rightly said it's or uh, there's a lot of uh... no fat loss due to dieting or various other yeah. reasons yeah from the body to lose weight is face yeah the uh, cheeks and the 
under under eye. So yeah, obvious. so we always see in patients who get really sick. Also, they have that hollow eyes and stuff. That's a sign of you not being healthy. That sometimes it's genetically. Yeah, yeah genetically, if it's there, yeah, we'll have to correct it. There's no option. But uh, apart from that, uh, actually, in fact, I think glasses help with under eye hollows because uh, yeah. excessive straining of eyes also causes uh, this thing, and it's protecting you from the UV in some way or the other. I guess. So, also, they. Yes, actually, the fat less the glasses. They also cover them up. Yeah. So I I I am a big fan of glasses. I love glasses personally. <laughs> so yeah, that. And uh, yeah, obviously, um, you know, other uh, issues like if you have thyroid issues, we see a lot of pigmentation under the eyes. It's common. Right. And iron we, deficiency, yeah. which is very very common in India. so that can cause under eye darkness this i'm talking about like the skin pigmentation wise not like the eye. and b12 deficiencies and also this in general all vitamins they can uh, you know cause these kind of issues yeah b pretty much yeah b1 vitamin a vitamin c again that's why we also advise uh, vitamin c serums uh, yeah vitamin the... c serums work beautifully like they work beautifully for any skin per se but uh, that's an important thing that you need to know is that your normal vitamin c serum don't uh, apply it in excess under your eyes because that can go and irritate the skin so specifically okay. under eye serums that have vitamin c those are useful so okay. i had yeah. another yeah. question that said is it really important to spend extra money on an under eye cream can i just use a normal cream so uh, that is also a question that we get asked a lot in ops so how i would take it is uh, the skin is thinner so definitely you need lesser concentration if you are a young person if you are you know a teenager and you know you're seeing a little bit of darkness under your eyes by all means right. just use your normal moisturizer and sunscreen that's fine but if you are an aging person because that skin is already thin and you've already lost collagen there so i think right. you have to specifically start investing in an eye cream after you turn 30 because that's the only thing that will work the normal cream won't work. So, Janaki, are there any specific creams for the skin types? So, usually, do you recommend uh, like that or any? Like, uh, is uh, there a... no, I think Indians, all of us have that type three, type four, type five skin. So, uh, depending on the skin type, like, uh, like I said, under eye uh, skin also is very different. Like, a lot of people have excessively dry skin. Some people have excessively oily skin. So, okay. depending on the type of skin you have, it's very, very important to moisturize the under eye area also because. moisturized skin looks a little bit plump and you know it takes care of that wrinkling once it's hydrated so right. a moisturizer is very very important and the type of moisturizer like we always say pick it depending on your skin type but luckily right. now in the market in india also we have fantastic under eye creams which have specific ingredients that you look for like uh, i always say you look for uh, a retinol if you're above 25 Vitamin right. C, like you had said, is a fantastic ingredient to have in your under eye creams. Niacinamide is very good because it helps with the pigmentation. And obviously, like there's a lot of plant extracts in all these under eye creams nowadays, like most creams. So it works well. And any particular diet that you recommend to prevent uh, dark circles? Of... Uh, we generally uh, ask people to eat like a healthy, well balanced diet. Apart right. from that, uh, sleep eight hours of sleep. we have yeah, for any under eye issue i always tell them to the ophthalmologist and say i always say please go get your eyes checked first check if you have any other issues uh, right. we right. look for allergies also because we uh, usually if the patient is atopic we find the denim organ fold under their eyes right. or you know the loss of the eyebrow so mm -hmm. if we see any of these signs then we also add uh, specific treatment for their allergies and we also right. ask the ophthalmologist for any anti allergy drops that they can use so i actually wanted to ask you how safe for anti allergy drops and for how long can we use like anti histamines i give for years together and i'm not bothered so is it the same thing for the eye drops yeah 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 see uh, you need some the allergy that mostly so we need to see uh, you know when these um, patients are um, experiencing allergies mostly it's summer times that we see a lot of uh, allergic yeah. uh, presentations so we we oh. give during the over a period of time i've seen kids when they you know grow older the immune system is developed better and they grow out of allergy so 
Okay. On and off, keep using them, and it's not of any uh, concern. Definitely, okay. antihistamines are concerned to the eyes as well. Okay. So, so perfect. They, they can be used for longer. Yeah. So they can. Yeah. The allergies are not there. They can discontinue. Do not keep using them. If the allergy is severe, then they can keep using them and under supervision, okay. especially. But as such, yeah, so, cause it, any, yeah. Any so a lot of patients are like, "Why are you giving us antihistamines for so long? Is it safe? Is it safe?" So I keep telling them it's very safe. You know, you, you'd rather have your allergy under control than you know it ruins your skin. Of, always better. You know, you, you have allergy. You, yeah, that leads to different com uh, complication. You know, yeah. also where uh, the epithelial aberrations have happened, like the cornea yeah. of excessive yeah. rubbing. rubbing. True. True. So, and, um, so a lot of people complain of that gritty feeling in their eyes also when they have allergies. So I guess it's the same thing, yeah. Of course, when the lid the lid is moving over the eye, it has to be smooth. There's there should not be any yeah. friction. Yeah. We there's a condition where uh, the the surface becomes very rough, like cobblestone appearance. Okay. So that we have some some foreign body sensation. It's again very uncomfortable yeah. in the yeah. eye. Yeah, I've had that once. So yeah. Right. You know. Especially content users, yeah. uh, they uh, they have this kind of uh, symptom. Yeah, yeah. So I was asked my uh, clients, the patients, to after you go home, if you be better to get uh, remove your contact lens and go switch to your glasses. Yeah. The contact. So how? Reduce the contact time as much as possible. The contact lens oh. in the eye. As yeah. much as always better to reduce oh. it. These days oh. we have disposables as well. Which I can yeah, use. Yeah, daily disposable ones. So, what are the best kind of contact lenses for someone who is using like daily disposable or the monthly disposable ones? Or daily is the best, uh, Janaki. As of now, okay. as day. Okay. Okay. Uh, some people recommend three months day out, three months disposables also, three monthly. Oh, so it depends on. Depends, but monthly is the best. You you use okay. them and throw throw them. There's no cross. Them. The solution can be. uh the solution get get a little uh, uh you know expiry date we yeah. tend to miss you know yeah. if it's a three store the lens again you can you have to use it for us three months if it's a daily yeah. then use and again yeah, it's so always it's easier yeah best. so uh someone's asking what is the uh, or oh, shravani is asking what is the best under eye cream for someone with normal skin that can be used regularly so if you are yep. young and you know you're in your 20s you use a normal under eye cream like uh, sesterma has a really nice vitamin c under eye cream you can use that or i've actually done a post on my instagram page you can look at all the under eye creams that we recommend and uh, so how do you reduce under eye bags and upper eye eyelid bulge okay yeah we have couple of uh, we need to figure out what is causing the under eye bags so if yeah, clinically so we had Yeah, med you know, if there's a hormonal issues and all, so medically, if the green signal is given by an endocrinologist or a physician, then from our side we have a uh, department for this, like plastic surgery, we have oculoplasty. Yeah. So we have uh, we have what we call the blepharoplasty, a small procedure. It's a ten to fifteen minutes procedure. Uh, it can be the we need to check how much amount of uh, bulging is there and how much to be the fat to be removed. So depending grade wise. So okay. if it's a, it's ten to fifteen minutes procedure, and uh, the results so are. So it doesn't leave a scar, is it, Hasha? No, no. The blepharoplasty per se, no scar. Because we use this, uh, the uh, creases on the lid. Uh, to, we use the yeah. crease on the. At least it gets yeah, covered. So, so, uh, so do these same plastic surgeons uh, uh, operate on uh, xanthelismas also? The yellowish. Uh, yeah. things that we get under the eye yeah we we, we yeah, yeah we can do the same uh, ocular plastic surgeons do that they do it and okay yeah. cuz the eyes you know first time when we look at a person the eyes are uh, you know true the, so everybody way, tends to look at the eyes yeah always it's better to get with a these these specialist concentrate only on these techniques unlike an yeah principal. so that's really good we'd be comfortable with a specialist who's doing that i didn't know i i i was thinking plastic surgeons do it i didn't know that there is a specific uh, ocular plastic surgeon that does this so i'll i'll be sending my patients to this ocular plastic surgeon next <laughs> i didn't know they were there yeah yeah, yeah. so these issues day in and day out so it's always better they handle it uh, 
Yeah, when, when there's small xanthelismas, we actually take care of it in the clinic per se. But the bigger ones, even we are scared to touch because we are scared that you know we leave a scar. Ah, right. So, right. yeah, so because surgeon handle it because again, cosmetic yeah. first. True, Maybe. true. Because no scar is worth having is what I always tell my patients. Acne scars, whatever scars, is nothing worth having. So please brief about allergic eye conditions and treatments uh, leading to persistent rubbing of eyes. So, eye allergies can be uh, whatever linen can cause, dust, any pets in the house mm -hmm. can cause. In general, food allergies also can cause allergies in the eye. So we need to first and foremost uh, what is causing this kind of allergy. So try and avoid it. So supposing um, uh, this one fine day you, you have these allergies and you tend to rub the eye, just try and uh, figure out retrospect to what did you have uh, mm. the dinner. Yeah. You try to avoid them next time. So that's yeah, one Yeah, usually when there's heavy pollution also, I notice that, you know, a lot of people come with eye allergies. I always recommend my uh, patients wear a helmet to, you know, prevent direct exposure, yeah. especially bike and all. Even during yeah. drive car, uh, direct exposure to AC is not recommended. So always uh, oh, okay. blow it directly on the face. The AC we blow it uh, onto yeah. the face. Avoid it. It's better to wear shades so that you can direct contact with uh, the uh, Yeah. And uh, you have to find, find, find what is causing the allergy. If it's general uh, VKC kind of a uh, thing, then we, we treat with regular drops. If it's a general allergy also causing eye allergies, then a physician should uh, take care of the general allergy. Yeah. We usually look at the general allergies also, dermatologists too. Right. Yeah. Right. So, um, yeah, same thing. Atopic people, yeah, we see that in a, a lot in atopic people, individuals. So that's one more thing that we particularly look at. And I also really want to point out at this point that people use unnecessary bad eye makeup which causes a lot of allergies, like a high load of cases that we see with the uh, dark yeah. circles. We notice that I they're using all these weird eye makeup products. So I always tell my patients, please invest in a good eyeliner and a good kajal. Whatever is near your eye, please invest in a very good quality thing. Because per se, these brands usually do their research well and they use uh, better products. And there's a lot of trials that go in because they're very scared of getting sued and stuff. So I guess definitely it's better to go for an expensive product for your eye. Exactly. And their brand is at stake. The name is at stake. So they they really uh, be careful while, uh, you know. Yeah, so they're very careful. So especially when it's your eyes, I think you should go for a good branded product. And, you know, and especially we also advise disposing of the eye makeup every once in six months and not more than that. Because Even the cleaner, makeup cleaners, cleansers are there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's better. Yeah, shows, yeah. Uh, yeah that's very of. important. Yeah, that, that's very important that a lot of people don't bother about the use random stuff to clean their right. eyes and all. That's very important. Uh, so, yeah, that being said, uh, how to get rid of the redness? Somebody's asking how to get rid of the redness. Sorry? The redness. The redness. I, I, I'm I guessing they mean the redness of the eyes. Yes, yes, yes. So we need to see what is the cause for redness. Infections can cause redness or general tiredness. Tired, tired the eyes can cause redness. So if it's an infection, then we have to treat with antibiotics, specific antibiotics. If it's regular redness that, you know, most of the people, uh, the IT employees uh, using yeah. a lot of screen. So yeah. use a lot of artificial tears, lubricating drops during your working hours. Yeah. So definitely most of the uh, patients ask me how many times they have to use these drops. So I just tell them, use them as much as you can. There's no harm using them. Yeah. It's just a drop, it's an artificial drop. There are no side effects or any complications with these drops. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. The then we uh, okay, another patient says, it's been 10 years since I got LASIK done. My eyes turn red so often when I'm exposed to the sun. Right. Yes, yeah, basically dry eyes again. As I was mentioning earlier, it's the yeah. same uh, culprit here. The dry principle. So when we use, use your laser, sunscreen, and yeah. yeah, you can use those nice shades to prevent uh, yeah. direct exposure. That's one way of it, 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 the best cure is prevention. So always prevent yeah. direct exposure to sunlight. 
So UV Should protection. Be. Yeah, definitely. So is LASIK preferable? Is what somebody is asking. Definitely, yeah, like, if uh, yeah. it depends on the kind of uh, power you have, and if you're suitable, definitely you can get LASIK done. It's it's definitely a safe technique as 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 long as you're suitable and you know there are no other pre-existing issues with the eyes. Definitely, you'll be happy. They'll be happy. So, is it advisable to go for vision correction in mid forties? If yes, what do you suggest? Of course, yeah. There's no age limit after twenty years. There is no age limit to get rid of. In case if you do, do, if anybody using glasses, if they don't want to wear glasses, and if their age is yeah. above two, there are different techniques. But we need to see what is good for them. So we need to assess the uh, particular, yeah. and definitely no age limit. Even sixty years, we 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 operate on cataracts, and they we we plant a multifocal lens, where they can get rid of yeah. glasses too. Yeah, I think my dad got that, and he's very happy with it. So yeah. So uh, they're saying how to avoid crow's feet. Yeah, crow's feet is again one of our most common thing. Pills on the. Is there anything to avoid? We know how to treat it. Avoid so. again. I don't think there's any. Um, we need to see what is causing it. It could be yeah. a genetic as well. The skin, if it stretches, yeah. it can. Avoid yeah. So not... how we assess it is the uh, crow's feet are basically dynamic wrinkles. So every time you are laughing, this muzzle right. goes and tugs at the orbicularis oculi. So crow's feet will come, and right. uh, and if you know, I think it shows that you know you've lived a happy life. You've been laughing a lot, so you have crow's feet. But otherwise, it's very very simple to treat. You come to us, and with about like ten units of Botox, we can take care of it. It'll be gone for six months, and then we come back. You come back, we do it again. Botox so is it's temporary again. Botox, but it yeah, it's temporary. Result. It just lasts you like six months because you're still moving your muscles a lot, but it's virtually painless and uh, gives you fantastic results. It disappears in like a week, so. And uh, no, but around is... the eye area is where uh, botulinum toxin works uh, very, very well, and it's done like a lot also. So we we use a lot of for uh, bot uh, blepharospasm and all. We use a lot of botox. Yeah, in you guys use like large units of botox. I think what we use is very minimal. So at that, at that point, I'd like to say that if you are noticing that the crow's feet are coming and stuff, it's always better to start early if it's bothering you. Because uh, right. that way we can delay the aging much more. We're calling it uh, preventive Botox or Protox, pretty much. Okay. Because uh, there's two types of wrinkles. The static wrinkles are the ones that are very deep, and you know, uh, right. th they're there when you're at rest, also, not when you're okay. actually in uh, motion or talking. So it's always better to get it treated one uh, when the wrinkle is still superficial, and you know, before it forms that crease. Bad. It's better to get it treated. Even the forehead yeah. wrinkles. Are... Yeah, forehead wrinkles also. I think I see that a lot in men. They wait for it to become that nice wide crease. So it, like it's it... really hard to treat at that point. You need to fill it to treat it if right. it becomes so wide. If you start it... early in your late, uh, you know, in your early thirties, late thirties, depending on how much wrinkles you have, it's much easier. I think I'll come to you, Nikki. <laughs> I don't see any lines on your face, Asha. So, but that we always advise that you know you start early. The earlier you start, it's always better. Yes, yes. yes. So yeah, How I think I got all the questions that uh, people wanted. I wanted to ask yeah, something. Yeah, how about this? Huh. Yeah. CO2 lasers. Uh, most of the dermatologists use CO2 lasers. Yeah. So CO2 lasers are basically uh, ablative lasers, Harsha. So uh, it's very, very important to go to a proper trained dermatologist to do this for you because be it CO2, be it NDAG or ablative or non-ablative, it's very important to uh, insert that intraocular lens before we're doing the procedure. That yeah. very few people know how to do it properly. So, uh, so it's very important to go to a proper dermatologist and do it. What we do is we basically resurface the skin. Okay. And uh, so you get like that tight, nice new skin. So it's a very popular procedure. You don't have to go for an ablative CO2 only. There's other simpler options like micro needling devices also, which we use. Uh, so at that, sorry, the skin gets a little fairer. 
yes it does because uh, you know you're uh, basically removing the topmost layer of your skin and you're giving it fresh skin so it's nice and soft and lighter so at that point i'd like to point out a lot of people use derma rollers at home because of right. all this korean beauty and beauty influencers putting out so much content out there so under eye area is a very bad idea to go and do a derma roller on your own it's dangerous first of all and you'll end up causing micro tears so okay. i am not a fan of derma roller anywhere on the face done by done at home you come to a proper professional and do it that's another thing but uh, yeah micro needling devices also help yeah, there's a friend of mine does it for himself the korean there's one there's a lot of people that do it and they don't realize that you know they can't control the depth of that needle they're supposed to control the depth of the needle and you know when we do it in a clinic the machine controls the depth we know exactly what it's going So I've yeah. seen terrible skin tears that come with derma rollers being done at home. So I also I'm not a fan of derma rolling at home. Derma rolling in a clinic is fantastic. How does glutathione work uh, for the whitening? Glutathione is uh, basically a super antioxidant. You know that it's there. It's it's available in our body all the time. So uh, how exactly it works is as we age, just like collagen, the glutathione levels also deplete. So okay. what we do is, and the oxidative stress is increased. So what we're doing is, if we're giving you glutathione, we're basically like uh, supplementing the glutathione. It reduces the oxidative stress. Naturally, the oxidative stress is reduced. The melanocyte uh, turnover is reduced. So the tyrosinase activity is reduced. So you tend to look a little lighter. It Apart works. from looking lighter, you'll also feel better. Energetic sort of situation. Right. But that also. Ways. More. the dosage is very important with glutathione a lot of people are uh, because now they've made it over the counter in india i don't understand the logic of it so people just keep popping couple of doctors Sorry. just treating uh, them yeah they, they, so they, they, i'd rather a doctor self medicate themselves than a i you know lay person doing it because they'll probably have an idea so i right. think glutathione uh, should be done after a lot of tests Uh, have been done to look at what the actual cause of the oxidative stress is, and uh, see. Basically, doctors are not scared to do it because you know that the cancer uh, doctors use it in very very high concentrations, and you know they're like, oh, they're using it, we can use it, sort of situation. But there are some potential side effects if the right dosage is not given, and right. sometimes if the right dosage is not given, they don't even get the desired results. So it's sort of like, I, I'd say skin lightening is a side effect of glutathione. actually yeah good so i see i see a lot of doctors uh, self treating them in the clinic so that's why how oh, safe yeah yeah i i see a lot of them doing that also and we we keep discouraging them saying you know uh, why go through the trauma of iv when you have other sources of doing it also i mean oral glutathione obviously doesn't get absorbed as much but there's other ways you can get lighter than with iv glutathione IV maybe is uh, uh, you know the faster mode of uh, the design. Uh, yeah, it's the fastest mode, mode of action, but uh, you won't get uh, the result with one single session of IV. You need to take it for a prolonged period of time. So yeah, the dosage is very important because uh, we as dermatologists are given uh, strict protocols on when we should be using it and how much we should be using. So right. I I think still because it's not FDA cleared, uh, everybody is still a little iffy about using it. Okay. So I think we've covered uh, most of it, no, Harsha? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'm sure there's about five, six questions I missed because I haven't uh, noted them down. So if if they come back to me, I'll send them to you, and we can probably reply to them normally. Done. So yeah, it was great fun, Harsha, and I'm sure I learned a lot from this. So I'm sure people watching also would have learned quite a bit from it. So yeah. Was a good. enjoyed the talk yeah Hopefully yeah so it was, talk. yeah i had a great time so this is a nice way of catching up with friends in this co- social distancing situation so i'm only talking exactly. to my friends in the lives i'm not talking to other people so yeah it really was fun so if anybody has any questions uh, you can uh, leave a direct message on my page or dr harsha's page we'll uh, we're going to post the video on the igtv for you guys to watch and we'll figure out if there's any way we can post it on to facebook as well so yeah i hope it was informative and it was great fun
Thanks, Harsha. And you can uh, you. obviously, uh, Harsha, are you open for online consultations? That's probably another thing uh, people watching might want to know. Home home consultation. Online consultations, like I'm taking yeah, on- online consultations. Yeah. Online, yeah. Taking online consultations. Yeah. So you can talk to. Do you want to say where you are available on online consultations? Um. We we'll just WhatsApp. if you just give the number, we'll just uh, post the hospital's number yeah. and people can get a consult. And I am available on N Fine and uh, via Birthplace. You can look at the online consultation link. So yeah. yeah. So, so hopefully I'll things get normal. It. Yeah, message it and I'll post it on this link. So it'll be easy for people to get in touch with you. Sure. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye, guys. Thank you.